Yeah, he, uh, got back in the team. Um, actually, had a really nice day today. I, um, I think he had like four or five catches and well over 100 yards. But um, but I thought he had a really nice day today. Is it fair to expect him if they're going to run in week one? Or? That, that wouldn't be fair. Uh, he's going he's gonna to be available week one, um, but to expect him to be 100%. Um, but he's definitely going to be... Um, we're going to be very smart with how we use him, but he's he's going to be plenty of uh, plenty available to to make his mark felt. Similar to Brees last year. Yeah, yeah. Are we, you guys kept those three undrafted defensive line. What, what did they show you to keep them on here? Uh, you know, they credit to them. They got better every single day. Um, you know, you look at their three skill sets. I thought they all. They throw their fastball. They have a distinct uh, skill set, and they're, they utilize it. And they and it's very clear on tape. The way they try to win is very different. Each of them, and uh, but uh, all very um, very productive. But um, they all all three of them possess a different type of game, which is uh, which is also really cool in this whole thing. From Watts to McGregor to Leonard, um, they're they're very different, but they're very same in their 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 makeup with regards to how they've been working. And uh, now the key for them is to eliminate the "I got it" attitude and find a way to stick. Have you been around a situation where you had three defensive and undrafted free agents before in the past? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I know in San Fran, um, Kevin Givens is still there. Um, you know, we had some guys in uh, San Francisco where there's always a D lineman. You know, because the college game has changed so much that a lot of guys, you know, because it's it's all screens and and quarterback run game and just getting the ball out. So you really don't get a chance to see uh, some of those guys slip through the c- cracks on the D line. And uh, and so w- when we usually get them and they can, you know, utilize all their athleticism, we feel like uh, we can we can discover something that may have not been discovered before. So. One guy we haven't asked you about is Lecky. Um, now that he's on IR, what, what's he dealing with? Uh, he's dealing with a hammy. Um, you know, we're we're hopeful um, for week two, three, but because it's that Thursday game, um, rather than have him uh, be ready for get ready for week three, we think he would have been ready for week three. Uh, but without practice, uh, we felt just just let it ride until the fourth game. Is Mike Carter back? Uh, yeah, he's back full. Uh, yeah, he was fine. He was uh, he was trying to get spatted up for practice. Did you guys do one day Wednesday? Yeah, uh, we had a, uh, a second uh, iteration or a, a second rendition, whatever you want to call it, of the green and white. Um, so it was a very very heavy day today, uh, very competitive. And then um, they're off next morning. Yeah, so they're uh, they're off um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then uh, we've got them coming back Monday, Tuesday. Uh, for some for some extra work, mandatory day off Wednesday, and then we get into our game week. Looking ahead a little bit, what, what's it going to mean to you personally? To, what did your time in San Francisco mean to you? Um, uh, first off, I, I, it's a special place. I, you know, getting my first opportunity as a coordinator, um, took over a not so great defense, and and we were able to to build that thing, uh, and. You know, bringing guys like Fred Warner, uh, Bosa, Armstead, Buckner, Jimmy Ward, Tart, Kwan Williams, DJ Jones, Greenlaw. Um, there's so many guys. Eric Reed was there for the first uh, for the first uh, year. Um, I'm sure I'm missing guys, but uh, D Ford, Ronnie Blair. If you like winning, if you like Ronnie. But um, but no, there, there's so many guys, so many coaches. Um, you know, I'll forever be indebted to the Shanahan family, Papa Shanahan, who had uh, a tremendous influence on me. Um, uh, Kyle, obviously, challenging me every day to, to look outside the box. John and his tutelage. I mean, it's just a, a an elite organization. Uh, the York family and the way they they operate day to day. I think it's a uh, it's a class organization, and uh, forever indebted to them. Robert, how would you define um, a successful season? Um, Honestly, um, I get the, the wins and all that, but for me, um, if we can can operate where, we're, where our feet are this year and be our best, I, I mean, it, that's going to be, I'll be proud. And uh, we've got a good football team. I know we've got a good football team, and the results are going to be what they are. Um, I just want us to show up every day, uh, 
with our with our minds on ball, ready to compete. And if we do that, I think the uh, the rest of it will take care of itself. How much do you think, much do you think Aaron's itching to get back out there? Oh, he's itching. He looks good too, man. <laughs> but um, you know, I think every day, every passing day, the offense is getting more and more confident. Um, it's gonna be fun. Robert, you, there was so much excitement about last year, the start of last year, and uh, first half hour in the stadium is probably the most electric I would think you, you've really experienced. What um, is it hard to get back to that level again this year in terms of the excitement without feeling a little burned? And, no. Um, if you're not excited to play this game, uh, then you're you're missing something. Uh, the um, the excitement to get out there and compete, regardless, is is always going to be burning in all of us. Um, you know, we've been going against each other now since OTAs, and I can speak for everyone. Where we're all itching to get out there and play some ball, and um, you know, so that I get it. That that moment before the game, that uh, pregame electricity, the uh, player inter- intro- introductions, 9/11, uh, all the NYPD, uh, NYFD, everybody out there was that was amazing. But uh, and the, all the emotions that were experienced that day. But um, every year is unique into itself. And uh, but I think our guys are just as ready now as they were a year ago. Where do you think you're better? Uh, up front, for sure. Our old line is uh, a lot more stable. Um, you know, it's. Uh, I'm really excited about that group. It's. Uh, it's a. That's a good group. <clears throat> this is kind of a, a random question, but I noticed at practice only half the team comes out like in the beginning and like the linemen come out much later. Is, is there a rhyme? Yeah, um, like I said, it's it, call it a hypothesis, but um, you know those guys they come out on uh, both fronts. They come out a little bit early in the past, and you know during special teams they work. And then during, you know, so you're almost getting 35 minutes more of work. And um, we've decided to keep them in the of, of football, which is awesome. But it's more pointed. We have them starting in the weight room to get more pointed work with regards to strength and uh, uh, strength and conditioning without wear and tear. And then bringing them out to stretch and transferring all those minutes that they're losing back to the football field, to actually practicing football with a hope that if they're off their feet, just that extra 30 minutes, um, it'll uh, it'll translate into a little bit more health. So uh, we'll see. And uh, But uh, knock on wood, so far so good. You guys obviously have a bunch of primetime games again. And just curious, from a logistical standpoint, like, it is drastically different than the playing one game Sunday. So how do you approach that? And then what did you learn from, from last year after having a bunch of primetime games? Um, well, you 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 plan to compete to to have the spotlight. I mean, I think that's what everybody wants. Um, obviously, as a coach, you want the one o'clock game so you can have but uh, have the uh, uh, consistency. But uh, but we we all strive for these moments. With those, there's always going to be changes with regards to Monday, short week, get ready to go to uh, Tennessee. Short week on Thursday, long week to Denver, short week to London, back to a mini long week. To, I mean, there's there's all kinds of changes, but I think it's also healthy. And we've kind of reflected that with the way we've done our schedule here uh, during training camp. It's been very different days have been, it's been changing. Uh, whether it was a 9 o'clock practice to a 12 o'clock practice to a heavy load on Tuesday to a heavy load on Thursday and then flip it to a Wednesday and a Friday and it's, um, we've been very deliberate in changing things up on them all off season to have them prepared for um, for these moments. So um, every team has to deal with it. Uh, we're lucky we get to do it more than most. A couple more. <clears throat> What's it been like for you this year? Getting you talked about reconnecting to the X's and O's in there, but more so on the offensive. I mean, I know you're always involved, so to speak, but you know, every day you're tired with the offense. With the offense. What's it been like? Well, first, I'm gonna uh, if I if I have a second life in football, I'm gonna come back as an offensive guy. They got it made. Uh, <laughs> but um, but no, it's it's been great, you know, just just the interaction and the uh, and the dialogue. Like I said, it's just been talking from a defensive perspective, and um, you know what what 
just like on defense, where we think something's happening on offense, an offensive guy walks, is like, hey, you know they're not trying to do that, right? The only reason why they did that is one, two, three. And like, oh, okay. Same thing. You know, going back and just talking through uh, what they think is happening versus what actually is happening. And uh, for the most part, they've got it, they're on point and they've got it right. But there's a, there's a couple gray area where you can just kind of help them see the picture better. And if you allow those guys to see the clear picture, they can create some really cool things that, that can uh, create issues for defenses. And, um, but, uh, but it's been great. It's been, uh, uh, I don't want to say rejuvenating or anything, but it's been it's been a lot of fun uh, being with those guys. But um, and uh, so hopefully hopefully it, it leads to some success. So you're not designing anything. You're not, you're just... I might throw a player two in there, but then they laugh. But no, I'm just kidding. People always describe Aaron's pre-snap stuff with his checks, adjustments, his cadence. What what have you seen in terms of the offense kind of getting used to that and learning him? I know they went through it last year in the offseason. I imagine this year was kind of new guys learning it again. What have you seen through camp? The rest of that? God, I don't want to jinx this, but uh, the operation has been so much cleaner. Um, I know early in camp there were some offsides, but I feel like um, we've been really, really good, especially the last couple of weeks. Um, that Giants week in practice, I mean, he gave, he threw the whole system at Adam, and our guys, I thought, did a really nice job with it. Um, you know, and he, he keeps training over and over every practice. It's not just getting up there and just going on one. Uh, he's training every single snap uh, to change cadence. And, I mean, it's extensive. It's, there's a lot. Uh, he has a lot of different things that he does to try to get you to draw sides. And, um, you know, he loves to, to mess with the opposing D-line opposing D line coaches. I'm sure he'll have a good conversation with Kasarik on, on Monday night. But uh, it's a... Uh, it's pretty cool. I think our operation has been so much better this year than it was a year ago. Uh, 